Does fasting burn muscle? That's a question I hear all the time, and that's what we're going to tackle coming right up. Before we talk about what Harry Cruz does, let's talk about the science behind his success. It's important to understand what causes muscles to grow or shrink. So, we all know how this works. Muscles grow because you put stress on them. So if you lift something very heavy, what happens is that you create micro tears in your muscles, and when you rest them, your muscles rebuild so that they're better able to handle that stress. So when you lift heavy things, you get stronger. And you get weaker because you don't lift heavy things. So for example, if you have an astronaut who goes up in space, all of a sudden they don't have the force of gravity and their muscles don't need to oppose that force and they very, very quickly lose muscle. Same thing happens if you were to rest in bed for a week. You'd lose a lot of muscles. So your muscles grow or shrink depending on how much stress you put on them and it really has nothing to do with what you eat. If you are in a situation where you have adequate nutrition, and that means a body fat percentage more than about 4%, which is very, very, very uh, little, then you're not in a situation where you need to use your muscles for fuel. Your body stores energy, that is calories, in two different ways. It stores it as sugar, and it stores it as body fat. So when you need to use those calories, then you'll take it out of your stores of sugar or your stores of body fat and not your protein. It would be very silly for us to design our body so that we store energy as sugar and fat, but when we need it, we just burn muscle. It doesn't make sense and that's not what the body does. So eating more protein or eating more doesn't necessarily build muscle and eating less doesn't necessarily burn muscle. Let's look at what the studies show. In this first study, published in Obesity Journal in 2010, what they did was they compared uh, what happened to the fat mass and the lean mass over 70 days of alternate daily fasting. That is one day fasting, one day not fasting. And what you can see from this study is that the fat mass decreased from 43.5 kilos to 38.1 kilos. So excellent, the body is using its stores of fat. If you look at the fat-free mass, which is the lean mass, which includes muscle, but isn't just the muscle, it went from 51.4 kilos to 51.9 kilos. In other words, the lean mass, which includes the muscle, did not go down. In fact, if anything, it went up. This more recent study in 2016 compared two groups, one with chronic calorie restriction, uh, marked as CR, and one with alternate daily fasting. And once again, you can see that in both groups they lost weight. If you compare the lean mass in terms of percentage, because as you lose fat, your lean mass percentage goes up, you can see that calorie restriction increased lean mass as a percentage of total body mass by 0.5%, but the fasting strategy increased it by 2.2%, meaning that the fasting strategy while they were equal in terms of weight loss overall, was about four times better at preserving the lean mass. Which hormone is most important for growth? Well, the name says it all, growth hormone. So this is a hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland. It peaks in puberty when most people are growing there most uh, rapidly and then declines over time. It also happens to be one of the counter-regulatory hormones, that is, when you don't eat, the hormone insulin goes down, but certain hormones, including growth hormone, go up. And we can see the effect of this increased growth hormone in this study. Here they treated people with documented low growth hormone with exogenous growth hormone. And overall weight was unchanged, but you can see that the lean mass increased by 3.7 kilos. That's almost eight pounds. While the fat mass, which is adipose mass, decreased by 2.4 kilos. At the same time, the thickness of the skin increased as did the bones, which is not shown here. And those are all great anti-aging benefits of this growth hormone. So why doesn't everybody take growth hormone? It's because of the side effects. 
What they found is that when you give people injections of growth hormone, it increases the blood sugar because it's one of the counter-regulatory hormones. So that's expected, which is going to increase prediabetes and diabetes. The other thing it does is it increases blood pressure and causes fluid retention. If fasting increases growth hormone, then why don't we get the same side effects? Well, because the fasting counteracts all those side effects. Where growth hormone is going to increase blood sugar, the fasting is going to decrease it. Where growth hormone increases blood pressure, the fasting decreases it. Where growth hormone increases fluid retention, the fasting is going to decrease it. So you're going to get all the beneficial effects of the growth hormone without all the side effects. Here's a measurement of how much growth hormone increases with fasting. And you can see in this slide here that the meal times really decrease the growth hormone and you get a spike in the evening time or overnight period. When you're fasting, the amount of growth hormone goes up tremendously. So the growth hormone is critical for maintaining our functional lean tissue. When you're fasting, growth hormone goes up, it maintains that lean muscle, but when you're ready to eat again, your body is already primed to build functional muscle, and that's why fasting does not burn muscle. We store our food energy or our calories as glucose or fat. When we don't have it, we use the glucose and fat, we don't use our protein. It's sort of like storing up firewood for the winter, and then as soon as it gets cold, to chop up your sofa and throw it in the fire. Do you really think our body is just that stupid? It's not how we survive to become the dominant creature on this earth. What does Terry Crews do? Terry Crews has been noted in many interviews to incorporate fasting every day as part of his overall regimen. He typically uses a 16-8 schedule. That's a 16-hour period of fast, and then he'll often work out fasted, and then eat for those eight hours. Why does this make sense? Well, remember, during fasting, insulin's going down, you're drawing on your stores of energy, including body fat, and then you're increasing your counter-regulatory hormones, which includes your sympathetic tone or noradrenaline, as well as growth hormone. So if you're increasing your noradrenaline, you're going to be able to train harder. If you increase your growth hormone at the same time as you do with fasting, you're going to be able to recover faster. So train harder, recover faster, and get all the anti-aging benefits without all of the side effects. And that's the benefit of training in the fasted state. And that's why it makes sense for Terry, as well as other uh, celebrities in Hollywood, such as Hugh Jackman, to adopt this. And you can too. So, if you enjoyed this, if you learned something today, share it with your friends. They might be interested to know. And if you learned something, if you could just do me a favor, just hit that like button, the one that's down there that looks like this. Yeah, that would be great. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much.